Well, the power's on now. I've gotten enough of the circuits refurbished or, and or repaired to uh, confidently apply power. And I've even got a little bit of a rough alignment done here. As you can see the dial pointer is fairly accurate. I haven't put the front panel back on because I haven't finished cleaning the knobs yet and I may have to adjust the entire dial scale using that screw during the alignment process. I only need to do that if both the AM and FM are out of alignment however. And my distortion measurements show that the IF section is aligned. If they're out of alignment the distortion will be high. But that's not actually what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is instability on the G9700 and G8700. The bias is set by turning that bias pot all the way down, turning the receiver on, and waiting at least five minutes. I recommend waiting 30 minutes. Once your receiver has been warmed up, you should note that your heat sinks are basically room temperature. After this warm up period, these heat sinks back here will be cold. Measure your bias from the two middle emitter resistors. So you'll put a probe across that pin there and across that pin, much like I have done here with these mini grabber leads. And you'll set it, once the receiver's warmed up, to 5 millivolts initially. And then you'll note that it starts to climb upwards. Keep an eye on it. This is okay. As long as, after a few minutes, it starts climbing back down. As you can see, it's doing right now. And it'll probably settle out to about 2.5 millivolts. Or about half of what your initial setting is. And that's fine. 2.5 millivolts is enough to bias the output stage just fine. You won't have crossover distortion problems, I promise you. Do not, once it settles down to 2.5 millivolts, crank it back up to 5 millivolts. You will overheat the amplifier. And the reason it drifts like that is because there is no thermal compensation. There is no link between this heat sink and the bias circuit here. It's rather unfortunate, but it's a design limitation we have to work with, and a slightly drifty bias is the consequence. If it starts drifting upward uncontrollably, if you start seeing 20 millivolts plus, shut it off, repeat the biasing procedure. If you experience other nasty problems, say you just replace the output stage, and when you turn it on it pops, well, Check your installation first. Make sure your mica insulators are installed properly. That sort of stuff. Make sure your thermal compound is installed properly and make sure you haven't mixed up NPN and PNP. If it works for a little while and overheats, recheck the bias. If you have a condition where you turn it up a little bit and then all of a sudden you get sm smoking resistors, you've almost certainly got a drive stage problem. So you should focus your efforts on one of these boards here, whichever channel is giving you trouble. You need to check every single power resistor on this board. They can and often do burn without any visible sign. If you find a burned resistor, you pretty much certainly have a bad transistor somewhere on that board, in addition to the outputs that just blew. I have heard of some people replacing these with smaller resistors. Don't do it. You might think you're adding a fuse, but you're actually adding a ticking time bomb. If those emitter resistors open up while the amplifier is under heavy load, the amplifier could become grossly, will become grossly out of balance and it will fail. Stick to 5 watt resistors there. If you blow the output stage, the first thing I would check are the resistors. There are a bunch of resistors below that heat sink there and two large transistors. They're on TO220 packages. You'll want to check every single resistor there and both those transistors. If those check out okay, 
proceed up the signal chain all the way to the input if necessary. These are direct coupled amplifiers and it is not unheard of for an output stage failure to cause cascading failures all the way to the input stage. It, it does happen. It's rather unfortunate when it does because the input stage transistor, the dual FET 2SK97 is very hard to get. There are some substitutions that are possible. I have not tested them. The next thing you need to check is the possibility of RF oscillation. Again, low output, you get smoke after a few seconds, might be oscillating. Drive stage problems are suspected here as well, as if a problem on the output filtering section. Now the output filters are underneath the unit on the boards that these drive cards plug into. They contain an inductor, a few large resistors, and some film capacitors. All of this must be in good working order or you could get RF oscillation. RF oscillation will overheat the output transistors very quickly. In fact, they'll overheat so quickly that it's quite possible that the uh, transistor will pop before it is able to transfer all this heat to this heat sink. And in that case, the heat sink will be just barely warm even though the transistor is melted down. And of course, the uh, thermal sensor will never see this and disconnect the load. It's also possible that even without a load, it will oscillate. And in that case, even if you disconnect the load, you can't save the amplifier. The thermal protection on this works by disconnecting the load, not the power supply. And that's a definite hazard if you have an oscillation problem. The only way, surefire way to sell if you've got an oscillation problem is by using an oscilloscope. It's one of the other reasons why I recommend only skilled technicians work on these things. You need special tools. You need an oscilloscope to service the amplifier to make sure it's stable. You need an AM FM signal generator, a distortion meter, and an oscilloscope to align the tuner. So, these complicated beasts are probably best left to the pros. But those are a few little tech tips for uh, amplifiers blowing up in these. And it's applicable to both the 9700 and the 8700. They're basically the same receiver, just different supply voltage and different output transistors. Okay, hopefully that helps you.